good morning <coughs> viewers on behalf of the department of technical education i welcomes you for the education through satellite of course today is the first day of the a uh, new year 2014 so i will take this opportunity to wish a very happy and uh, prosperous new year <coughs> so of course uh, i have a absence of the students you have a physical absence of a teacher so we have a a class so of course thanks to the technology so i have been directed to <coughs> teach few concepts in applied science first of all what is science so everyone may know whatever may be your branch every student should have a applied science subject whether you belongs to mechanical engineering whether you belongs to electrical engineering whether you belongs to civil engineering etc every student in their technical study he has to study the subject applied science now the question is is the study of this subject is this much essential so my answer is definitely yes so whatever may be the technology that the technology develops only only by following the principles by following the laws by following the concepts of the science so without science you can't expect a proper technology that's why people will say science and technology are the two different faces of the same coin so i will add to this slogan to one more so science and technology are the two different two different wings of the same bird so i hope you may understand the link between the science and technology so here <coughs> before going to know what is science let us try to know why it is uh, called as a applied science so the answer is very much simple so while learning your technology i mean during the study of your technical subjects you are required to implement some concepts in the form of laws in the form of definitions in the form of principles of science to understand that technical subject for that reason so you are going to apply some principle laws and techniques of science while learning the technology that's why the title of the subject is called as a applied science now with respect to syllabus prescribed for this topic so more than 90% of the syllabus i mean more than even 95 also are the contents of the physics only only a few only a few means so uh, ph of a solution corrosion and pollution these are all the few topics extracted from the chemistry the intention of keeping these topics is only to give the awareness to the students regarding the environment because of the combination of major part of the physics and the minor part of a chemistry so both are branches of science the title of this subject has been called as a applied science i hope you may understand <coughs> now the question is what is science so it is a one of the uh, old question for you because you are learning and uh, so watching the world <coughs> uh, since from your fifth standard what is science how it is developed what are the different uh, uh, principles of the science etc even the so i will define the term science as you all know there are many definitions for science the one most familiar definition of science is science is a systematic study systematic study of a knowledge so systematic study means what you have to study you have to study some natural phenomena for example you can say why the stars are twinkling during the night time why the color of the sea is blue 
why the color of the sky is blue why sky appears blue during sunset and sunrise how plant grows what is the color of the uh, why the color of the leaf is green etc these are all some natural concepts so to know why what when about these concept you have to study those concept systematically by studying systematically what answer you should get so that is nothing but a science so i want to say science means a systematic study of the knowledge so you have to study systematically the facts and phenomena the facts and phenomena we have to study systematically so i mean where these facts and phenomena are available once again in nature so as i explained earlier so raining it is a fact so rainbow it is a phenomena so the reason of raining so the reason of rainbow these are all the so systematic study gives the definition for the science so science can be defined as the systematic study of the knowledge <coughs> so now as i say in your subject applied science most part is covered by the content of the physics now it is the time to know what is physics once again as that of science for physics also there are many definitions physics is a measurement science physics is a study of nature so one familiar definition for the physics is it is a branch of science which deals with the study of matter and energy <coughs> which deals with the study of matter and energy now the thing is what is matter so in general we can say anything which has a mass you can call it as a matter so at the same time what is energy so before going to uh, know the actual definition of energy so sound it is a form of energy study the sound in the form of wave motion heat it is a form of energy study the properties and principles of heat under the one of the branch of physics it is called as a thermodynamics light it is a form of energy study the light you know one of the branch of the physics is called as a optics like that i mean we are going to study the concept which has a mass and the energy in general you can define energy as a capacity to do work is called as a energy so only we are learning very basic concepts in this chapter so but those basic concepts plays a major role while studying a technical subject so you can define a familiar fashion of the definition of for physics in the form of a branch of science which deals with the study of matter and energy so now i want to give few example let us concentrate what is the common thing is there in that example uh, uh, number 1 is <coughs> the height of yourself what is your height you question yourself there is answer for you what is your weight how many windows are there in your classroom how many books are there in your bag so how many <coughs> uh, doors are there in your classroom how many piece of chalk are there on the table of your sir etc so observe all these examples the most common thing in these examples is all are measurable is it clear i mean uh, the number of books in our bag is is countable your height it is measurable so your weight it is measurable how many windows are there in your classroom it is measurable i mean so in all these examples the most common thing is all these are measurable quantities in physics these measurable quantities are termed as a physical quantity these measurable quantities are labeled by a name physical quantity in examination even it will be asked for many times for two marks also so define physical quantity the answer is very simple any quantity which is measurable or all measurable quantities are called as a 
physical quantities. You can give a more specific example also length, length of the object, area, area of the room, volume of the container, density, so velocity, anything which is possible to measure. So, then you can you can term out that term as a physical quantity. <coughs> Suppose physical quantity has been expressed in terms of a number because it is measurable. For example, you can say you can I will ask one question to student or one question to students in my classroom. What is your weight? Please stand up and tell. So, uh, it may be a surprise for you most of the students more than 80 percent of the students not able to tell their weights properly. I do not want to say they are telling the their improper weights, but the thing is the way of telling their weights is practically wrong. I mean, so students answer is like that. So, my weight is 54 sir, my weight is 48 sir, my weight is 62 sir, my weight is 70 sir like that. So, what they say that is 64, 48, 69, 70, these are all simply the numbers, they just gives the magnitudes, they just give the counts of the quantities. What is 64? 64 is your weight according to you. So, according to me 64 is the number of chair, chairs in that classroom. So, instead of saying 64, suppose if you say 64 kg, by the presence of this kg, anyone can identify, of course, he cannot identify this is your weight, we can say this is the weight of some object. So, this 64 will carry a meaningful value, meaningful meaning. So, only when kg is right, so on this side of it. So, what is kg? So, everyone without knowing the definition say it is a unit. What is unit? There is a specific definition. So, you just observe here in the absence of kg, 64 is simply a number. In the presence of both number and kg, it indicates it is a so mass of something. It, it is a so mass of any article. Of course, it may not be yours. It may be anything. It refers the mass. Similarly, so length of your room, length of your pen, say 10 centimeter. In, instead of writing 10 centimeter, if you write only 10, it gives only a number. It is simply a number. So, if you write on this side of it centimeter, definitely it indicates length of something. You see, here by the presence of kg, the number 64 has a specific meaning. By the presence of centimeter, the number 10 is a specific meaning. So, the what is this kg and centimeter means? These are all some standard used for the ref for referring a physical quantity. So, in the absence of these standard of reference, any physical quantity is not a complete. So, it is simply in a single sentence you can say in the absence of these two standard of references, the every physical quantity is termed as a so meaningless quantity. So, what is this kg and centimeter? So, it has been abbreviated in general as a unit. What is in the title of your first chapter itself is a unit dimensions and measurements. <coughs> so, I will say practically what is unit, kg is a unit, centimeter is a unit, then how can you define unit? Even in the examination, you can expect the question define unit of a physical quantity. You can say any standard of reference used to measure a physical quantity, it is called as a unit. For example, kg, it is a standard of reference used to measure mass of anything, centimeter, it is a standard of reference used to refer, so mass or uh, length of anything, is it not? So, the standard of reference used for the measurement of a physical quantity is called as a unit. So, please note that in the absence of a unit, so any physical quantity, whatever precious it is, it is a meaningless quantity. So, before that, uh, I will tell uh, uh, the uh, types of the physical quantities. So, physical quantities are broadly classified into two types. One is fundamental physical quantities. Another one is a derived physical quantities. 
fundamental physical quantities and a derived physical quantities. So, fundamental means most basic. So, which are the fundamental quantities? You can say the fundamental physical quantities as length, mass and time. These three are defined as a <coughs> fundamental physical quantities. What is the uh, qualification to have a physical quantity to become a fundamental quantity means? So, that quantity should be independent. That quantity should be independent means that quantity should not depends on any other physical quantity. For example, length. What is length? So, it is just a gap between any two points. It never depends on any other physical quantity. That is why length is a fundamental quantity, mass is a fundamental quantity and time is a fundamental quantity. In general, you can say any independent quantity. So, you can call it as a fundamental physical quantity. So, then what is derived quantity? The name itself indicates what type of a physical quantity it is. Any physical quantity which can be derived, any physical quantity which can be derived by making use of a fundamental quantity, you can call it as a derived physical quantity. For example, so I want to take a area as a an example for a derived physical quantity. So, I will say any physical quantity which can be defined, which can be derived by making use of a fundamental quantity is called as a derived quantity. So, you know what is the basic definition of area? It is simply a product of length into breadth. So, length is a fundamental quantity, breadth is a one more form of a length. Therefore, area is a physical quantity which is derived by making use of a fundamental quantity length that is why area is an example for a derived quantity. Similarly, you can define volume. So, the basic definition of volume is it is a product of length into breadth into height. So, definitely volume is a physical quantity since it is defined by making use of a fundamental quantity length into length into length that is why volume is also a so derived physical quantity. So, any physical quantity which is derived by making use of a fundamental physical quantity. So, is called as a derived physical quantity. So, in general even you can say, so any physical quantity other than the fundamental physical quantities are referred as a derived physical quantities. So, we always already know what is a unit, what is the importance of a unit. So, we say that in the absence of a unit, whatever may be the precious of a physical quantity, it is a meaningless quantity. So, in the presence of a unit, every physical quantity has got its own meaning. Now, length, mass and time and uh, yeah, any other physical quantities other than length, mass and time all are physical quantities. So, now what are the units of the fundamental quantities? In the examination question is like that, define unit of a fundamental physical quantity. The answer is very simple. The units which are used to measure the fundamental physical quantities are referred as a fundamental physical oh, unit fundamental units of a physical quantities. For example, length. So, you can measure length centimeter, millimeter, meter, mile, kilometer, etcetera. All these are units of the fundamental physical quantities. Similarly, mass you can say milligram, gram, kilogram, quintal, etcetera. These are all the units of mass where mass is a fundamental physical quantity. Therefore, those units are called the fundamental units of a physical quantity. Analogous to this time. So, you can say second, minute, hour all these are the <coughs> all these are the units all these are the units of a physical quantity, all these are the units of the fundamental physical quantities that is why. So, these are also referred as a so fundamental uh, units of the physical quantities. Similarly, so derived units what are derived der units of a derived physical quantity? The units which are used to measure the derived physical quantities you can call it as a derived physical quantities. For example, so as I write area length is in terms of a centimeter. So, breadth is in terms of a centimeter. Therefore, 
area a unit of area is centimeter square. You can say centimeter square is the unit of area where it is a derived physical quantity. I mean the unit of a derived the units which are used to measure the derived physical quantities are called as the units of the derived physical quantities. Now the thing is <coughs> so after knowing the importance of the unit of a physical quantity so the different systems of units are formed to give the units for the fundamental quantities. So, you can call this one as system of units, different system of units are framed. The un intention, intention is to give the <coughs> units for the fundamental quantities. So, you may, so uh, in your mind uh, there is a question why these system of units are framed only to give the units of fundamental quantities, why not uh, for the derived quantities. So, you all of you know if you know the units of a fundamental quantity, then you can have the units of the derived quantity by making use of those units of the fundamental quantity. As I write earlier, centimeter square is the unit of area. So, how we get centimeter into centimeter? So, length is measured in terms of a centimeter, breadth is also measured in terms of a centimeter where centimeter is a unit of length and length is a so, so length is a fundamental quantity i mean the summary is if you know the units for the fundamental quantity you can extend your knowledge so this knowledge to get the units of the derived quantities so few of the different system of units framed are fps system cgs system and MKS system. <coughs> so, what is the abbreviation of this FPS system means? So, F means foot, P means pound, S means second. The starting letter of the word foot is F, starting letter of the word pound is P, starting letter of the second is S. So, these are abbreviated as foot pound second of course foot is used to measure length pound is used to measure mass a second is used to measure time so length mass and time in fps system are measured as foot pound and second foot pound and second are the units of length, mass and time according to FPS system. Analogous to this, this CGS system abbreviation stands for, C stands for centimeter, G stands for gram, so S stands for second, where centimeter is used to measure length, so gram is used to measure mass and uh, yeah, second is used to measure time. So, according to CGS system, centimeter, gram, and second are the units used to measure the fundamental physical quantities length, mass and time respectively. Coming to the SI, uh, MKS system, so again MKS is an abbreviation for meter, kilogram and second where meter is a unit used to measure length, kilogram is a unit used to measure mass and second is a unit used to measure time. <coughs> so, according to MKS system, meter, kilogram and second are the different units used to measure the fundamental quantities length, mass and time respectively. So, these different systems can adopted by different countries. So, and so they are going to study the concepts in the science and technology. So, as time passes, our scientists, I mean scientists of the different parts of the world thought that, so why it is possible to follow throughout the universe a single system of units. So, this idea, so will give a birth for one more system of units, it has been called as a SI system of unit.
SI is stands for a system of international units. So, that was international system of D units, derived units. So, in 1960, all different parts of the, uh, all uh, different, uh, different scientists from the different parts of the universe assembled somewhere. So, they decided to give birth to SI system of units. According to SI system, so scientists thought that, so not only length, mass and time are the fundamental quantities, I mean independent quantities, there are many other physical quantities which are also independent. Therefore, so in addition to length, mass and time, scientists will frame few of the physical quantities which are independent to each other and they are called as the basic physical quantities. In the examination, you can ask the question, write down the basic quantities or basic physical quantities in have length, mass and time. <coughs> so, in addition to this, we have electric current. So, temperature, luminous intensity, and amount of substance. So, these are uh, different physical quantities, different basic quantities according to SI system. See, as that of length does not depends on any other physical quantity, your electric current is also not depend on any other physical quantity. That is why it is called as a basic unit. Similarly, temperature, luminous intensity and amount of substance. So, in SI system, length is represented in terms of meter mass is represented as kilograms and time is represented in terms of second. <coughs> time is represented in terms of second. Electric current as ampere, temperature as Kelvin, luminous intensity as candela and amount of the substance in terms of mole. These are all the uh, units for the so basic quantities according to SI system. So, because uh, the lack of the time, so we may stop our discussion at this level. So, in the next class according to your timetable, whenever science is there, so I will continue with the further part of this chapter. Thank you one and all.